Welcome back, Hampshire chemistry students. In today's video, we're gonna be working towards the goal of reviewing our one and two step stoichiometry. In order to do this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your one and two step stoichiometry sheet just like I have here. Now you could be printing this out on your own page or you could be writing it on a separate sheet of paper or tippity tapping on the Chromebook. Either any way is, is acceptable. I'm personally a fan of writing things and I have a printer, so it's nice and easy, okay? So taking a look back and thinking about our brains from a couple of weeks ago now at this point, we have several different conversions that we've learned about before, right? We know the idea of a mole in chemistry, kind of like a dozen, but for way smaller things. We can convert that mole into grams using the molar mass. We can convert that mole into liters if we're at STP, or we can convert it into atoms and molecules. Okay. And the one thing that I haven't put on here yet is a reminder of our heart of all of stoichiometry. And that has to be our mole to mole conversion. If you do not do that mole to mole conversion, you're not gonna get any of our one two step or soon to come three step problems correct. So let's take a look at a problem like the first one here where it talks about the decomposition of potassium chlorate. This is a big part of the gunpowder reaction. And we can see that in this problem, we are starting with how many uh, it's asking, asking us to find, excuse me, how many moles of potassium chlorate are produced when we have 15 moles of oxygen. So we're gonna be in this problem, we're gonna take our moles of O2 and we have to convert those into moles of our potassium chlorate. Okay. This is the heart of our stoichiometry, and really that's all it's asking us to find, right? Moles to moles. So we're going to make this nice and easy okay, by starting with our 15 moles of O2, then setting up our conversion factor. Remember these guys with our fractions, right? Our moles of O2 is our known, so that's going to end up going on the bottom. The moles of the KClO3 is our unknown. That's going to go up on top. So how do we do a mole-to-mole -mole conversion? Well, that's simple. We need a nice balanced equation. And hey, we've got one right here. Okay? Our equation says that for every two moles of potassium chlorate, you must have three moles of oxygen. Boom, boom. So all I have to do in my calculator now is just take that 15 moles. So make sure you guys can see, there we go. 15 moles of O2 times two on top divided by three on bottom. And I get a final answer of 10. Double checking my units here. You can see that moles of O2 will cancel and I'll be left with mole 10 moles of KClO3. Put a box around it because I'm awesome. Okay. And we can check down at the bottom and make sure, yep, that was one of our choices. Okay. You can, why don't you try out number two on your own here? Maybe you can pause the video and do that right now. Or you could follow along with me right down here to number three, where it talks about some of uh, World War II had some of those first small, actually carryable batteries. Okay. And that involved poisonous mercury. Okay. Thankfully, they're not made of that anymore. Hey, you can collect mercury by decomposing mercury to oxide, and we need to actually ooh, balance an equation. So if you want to, this is a good time to pause and review some balancing real quick. Okay? But right now, though, we can take a look at this guy and see that I have two, two O's on the right. So I'm going to want to make sure I have two O's on the left. And that means I now have two mercuries, so these guys need to be balanced as well. If I want, I can go ahead and put a number one there just for fun to remind myself that I don't need anything else. So we now have a balanced equation and we can proceed with our problem. In this problem, it's asking us how many moles of HGO, so we're gonna end with moles of HGO, are produced when we have 125 grams of O2. So, ooh. Notice here, this is a bit different, right? Up here, we went moles to moles. Now we're gonna to need to do grams to moles. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we still have to follow our heart of stoichiometry. I'm going to, at some point, 
take moles of O2, that's my starting stuff, and convert that into moles of what I'm looking for, the HgO. But the thing is, we don't have our moles of O2, we have our grams of O2. So I have to turn these grams of O2 into moles of O2. Hopefully this is starting to come back here, right? I see two arrows. That's gonna be two steps of math that I'm going to need to do. So let's take that starting amount, 125 grams of O2, and we're going to multiply by two fractions. All right, that's gonna be our first and our second step of math. In our first step, we're gonna take our grams of O2, I'm gonna put that on the bottom, and put our moles of O2 on the top. When I look up at our top conversions, we can remind ourselves that one mole equals the molar mass in grams. So wherever I see moles, I'm just gonna put the number one, and wherever I see grams, I need to pull out my periodic table. Hopefully you still have one of these guys handy with you. We can see that oxygen is 16, but this is O2. So it's not gonna be 16, it's going to be 16 times two, which is 32 grams of oxygen. Now, that's our first step taken care of. Now we have to turn our moles into moles. So I'm gonna follow my units here, right? Moles of O2 go on the bottom. And then I'm looking for the thing we planned in the beginning, right? Was the moles of the mercury oxide. And just like we did on the front part, right? When we do a mole to mole conversion, we need to use our balanced equation. So when I look up here, I have two moles of HGO and I have one mole of O2. So the final math in my calculator is gonna look a little bit like this. I'm gonna take 125 times one divided by 32 times two divided by one. And we get a final answer of 7.8125. That matches our answer of 7.81 right down here at the bottom. Don't forget our new units, right? Because grams of O2 cancel moles of O2 cancel, left with moles of MgO. Oops, excuse me, Mr. Bartlett. Moles of MHgO. Whew. Quarantine's getting to me, guys. All righty. Moles of H2O is our final answer. Hey, why don't you try out two and four on your own as a, la a little bit extra of you. Both the answers are down at the bottom to help you. And then once you're done with this, we can move on to three-step stoichiometry. Take your time. Don't forget to ask questions. And you've got this.